I love Pokemon. I always have, and always will. Not just the game, but the characters themselves. I was about six, and my dad bought me my first ever game console. A Game Boy Yellow colored Game Boy console with a copy of the Pokemon Yellow. I was overjoyed, as I have been a hardcore Pokemon fan ever since I started watching the TV shows with my brother and some friends. And every time, I would start trying to react some of the Pokemon. But due to my younger age and naive nature, I didn't know it was just a kid show and game. My brother's was with me, and he had his own Game Boy colorless Game Boy. See through the one that shows all the funky machinery inside of it, and had a copy of Pokemon Blue. I would have gotten red, but they were out of stock. Me and my brother began the game, along with me, in the car on the way to my grandmother's house, and we were both instantly hooked. I fell in love with Pikachu instantly, and my mind, being so naive at a young age, made a call it a weird game. Thinking of a girl who had moved away recently, a very close friend of ours, I named my Pikachu Jessica as a tribute to her. I got to Pewter City, and I had a Butterfly Free and Pidgey already, similar to Ash in the cartoon. I had turned it off and begged my dad to buy me new batteries to keep playing, but it was safe to say that I was hooked. After time, my team grew stronger and I, it changed, expanding itself, now replacing Butterfree with and Pidgeotto with Slanch Slash and Garo, a Dragon Knight traded for me for my brother. As well as them, my team had added the Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur that get you jet during the game. However, one Pokemon never changed throughout the game. Jessica. She remained it on my team throughout the game. I didn't mind that she was a little weaker than my other Pokemon because she wasn't involved. She did have a special place in my heart. Somehow, no matter how many times my brother tried convincing me to involve her into Raichu, which was impossible in my game, train her to him to let him do it, I never did. I liked Jessica, and the way she said it, and the way she kept, kept training along with my other Pokemon, Hearing her cute Pika was she went into battle and the little animations when I spoke to her. In fact, she was my very first Pokemon on my team to reach level 100. My first top ever level Pokemon. The first first V I had gotten her. My dad told me I was too old to into the game, but I saw it differently. I saw Jessica as more than just pixels and bites in the video game. I saw her as a close friend, a companion. And someone who would cheer me up when I was down. With her pika pika, every time I pressed the A on her, I'd sense it. I began to love Jessica as a friend, as weird as it sounds. Soon Pokemon Gold and Silver came out. I traded my yellow team to my Pokemon Silver version and trained on that one instead, even getting them all to level 102. Jessica still remained the same head of my party, along with my yellow team and my new Pokemon Silver team. I remember watching the anime in Johto and Ash saying that he vowed all of his Pokemon and treated them like family. I valued my Pokemon in the same way and Jessica felt like the little sister I have never had. My brother had the tendency just to restart his game when, I, when he got bored. I even got Pokemon Red too to try and match him and we even raced, had races together. He and I battled occasionally and he often won but he could never match up to my Pokemon Yellow team. One day, however, one of our younger friends came around and messed with the game without me knowing. He didn't erase it, but he accidentally involved Jessica into Raichu. Since it was on my new crystal version, he couldn't ref she couldn't refuse like she did in yellow. I felt gutted and a bit sad for some of my past have died, but to relieve some nostalgic moments, I traded my team back to yellow and began fighting some Pokemon with my team. I love having it, my love for having it back, Although Jessica wasn't following me around anymore. I still treated her like the Pikachu I've always had. I even spoke to her in my game a few times. And once or twice I thought she responded to me. If I felt happy, to the Raichu's cry was normal though. And if I felt sad, it slowed down and a little saddened. It may have just been me, but oh well. When Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire came out, I was distraught that I couldn't trade Gen 1 and 2 Pokemon to them. I felt incredibly sad and put down my Pokemon Yellow to pick up a copy of Pokemon Ruby, and if it was American or British Game Boy Advance, I began to play it and instantly hooked onto it. I made a new team, but every now and then I would went back to my old games. 
Jessica still made me come back to yellow. And her Pikachu at the front of the sprite always made me happy to see her again. Unfortunately, my life outside of my video games was becoming less fortunate. My mother was getting sick and slowly dying of cancer. The doctors tried everything they could to fought to help her keep her alive, but everyone knew that the end was coming, except me. I was so naive that I never even understood half of what was going on. Sure, I knew my mom was ill, but then the invincible happened, and it finally smacked me in the face. I closed myself to reality. Playing games was forcing everyone away from me. My thoughts were too misguided and far-fetched. My mind was distorted, and I was being doing incredibly bad on my games, even if I was trying to use them as a fail-safe. Ruby was no fun anymore, and most of my other Pokemon games were just plain rubbish. Super Smash Bros. Melee kept me entertained for a while, but soon even after that it got dull. The only thing for me now was Yellow. Somewhat fail-safe, Jessica and Yellow actually worked. She seemed to cheer me up. And even a, a Raichu and a tough battle cry kept me going forward. I met a girl online and began to fall in love with her. She helped me through several hard times and she was also a Pokemon fan. I got Pearl and soon after began to play after that. Getting hints and tips from this new friend known as S to protect her identity. And making her new team. Buying Pokemon Revolution soon after the battle on its occasionally. Everything was getting back together until one fateful event, one night that would me unknowingly set off the whole chain reaction. I had came home from school incredibly angry. People at school had been bullying me, and a friend had turned on me and seriously upset me. In blind rage, I had stormed into my room and began to throw things around, my bag, books, drawers, everything that wasn't secure. I eventually calmed down and began tidying up, removing things from the pile I have made of heavy objects being thrown. I heard an odd crunching, cracking noise. Digging everything away, I found what made my anger dissipate into nothing. There, crushed at the bottom of the pile, was a yellow cartridge for the Game Boy ge color game. I had one yellow color game, and that was the game that I started with. Yellow. I cried. I think I really cried for some time. But just holding the smash bits of my game into my chest. No more nostalgic battles with the Elite Four. No more battles with my arrival. No more Jessica. The Pikachu to Raichu I had grown to love as a friend, almost as a sister. I felt guilty, but even still I had other Pokemon games. I had Pearl with an amazing team on it, and soon I was going to get Platinum. Would I really miss a Pokemon game that even was about 7 or 8 years old? I wish I paid more attention. I was far too blind and naive. I began to play Pearl more frequently. Chain, challenging S into battles as well as my friend. I moved into a new school and got platinum, but my depression kept coming back to haunt me. My brother was too, was suffering from depression from the death of our mother. Neither of us were getting any better. Well, I was stable thanks to S, who had now became my girlfriend. But my brother was worst off. My brother wasn't even going to school anymore. He had lost interest in Pokemon and gone to other fandoms. But I stay loyal. I still am. To this very day, a number of one Pokemon fan in my school. However, when I played my Pokemon games, something lingered at the back of my mind. Something that I'd forgotten. Something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. Whatever it seemed to be, I seemed to get this feeling whenever I saw a member of the Chu family in the anime or the games. It was odd and a little creepy. A year and a half later, approximately six months ago from today, Another tragedy stuck. My brother, who had slowly been sinking lower and lower into depression, died in his flat suddenly. Nobody told me anything about what happened, but it was enough. My depression came back in the storm and smacked me. A few days later, I was due to go back to school. I was rummaging through my old things that would bring me back memories of my brother. Digging in a box, I found a cracked object. Pulling it out, I was surprised to see that it was an old Pokemon Yellow cartridge. There was a large chunk of it missing from the front, and a lot of the nuts and bolts inside of it were loose and tipped all over the bottom of the box. I looked at all of them, and I attempted to find the lost piece of the cover, but to no avail. Finally giving up, I placed it back into the box and put it away. As I did, the name flashed into my mind and made me pause. Jessica. Where I had heard that name before, I couldn't remember. 
I stuffed it back into my computer desk and left for school. Things weren't going very well for me. After my brother's death, my mind was going wrong. I was soon hearing voices in my head and I was diagnosed with minor multiple personality disorder. Their Pokemon Heart Gold, my recent game, along with S and my two friends know as you known to you as P and R, were the only things that were keeping me insane. Soon after P suggested I get the new Pokemon games, Pokemon Black and White, I decided black because I liked the version of the white dragon rush around. He said that it would get it to white and we would race to see who could beat the game first, just like me and my brother would have done. Soon after the game came and we instantly went to playing it. Within three days, I was already in love with the seven badges and a full team. My love for Pokemon would never die, and P was left in the dust with only four badges. Finally beating the game and getting the transfer machine, I borrowed P's and DS and began scrolling through the sum of the Pokemon to trade it into my gold. I wanted to replace the Lightning for my Zebstrika and Wildfire my Simiseer because they were far too weak. Looking across some a Pikachu I had gotten from Yellow Forest Walk, Pokey Walker Run, it was female. Modus Nature, Surf, Volt, Tackle, and two other moves I can't remember. Perfect. It's a tradition of mine. I always name my Pokemon. It helped me put the characteristics to them. And I've done so ever since I could remember. Poke my heart gold when the file was loaded and I took the Pikachu into the name raider. Pikachu seemed to be like the only one worthy of being in my team. I had already decided to replace Simiseer with another Unnova Pokemon. As I went to nickname her, I had a discussion with the other two voices in my head, asking what to call her. As we were asking and talking, my stylus tapped absolutely on the screen without me realizing it. As I came back in the focus from my conversation with my two other counterparts, I realized that my dwaddling had maybe press entered. I rolled my eyes and looked to see possibly silly name I had made. Congratulations. From now on, this Pokemon will be known as Jessica. Jessica? My eyes widened as I recognized that name from somewhere. Where I don't remember, but it seemed to fit it. Everything went there very smoothly. We decided to stick with that name, and I sent Jessica to my black and played Hade, where we were captured game thingy. It took me a two tries to do it, but I eventually got my Pokemon to black. Jessica was shifted in front of my party. I began to train her. Things were going as planned. The lucky egg and XP point power. I was using my C gear. We were working great. I changed her moveset to be more like the special oriented. She had the moodest nature and kept training. Things were starting to get strange for about 30 minutes after she was in the game. I had started training Jessica without XP boost and just gotten her to level 50. Level 50 was the level I was planning to evolve her into Raichu. I had pressed twice to get rid of the stats and then the third time to get rid of the winning battle messages. However, after then the screen went back to normal and stayed back for a few minutes. Thinking that my game crashed, I pressed the A button once or twice. A black message popped up on the screen as if I just received an item. But the text was going slowly, and what was displayed made me frown. Remember me? I blinked. I didn't know who that was. The text box vanished, and the screen just went to normal. I guessed it might have been just some odd glitch for the event. Maybe a joke since they did, since Pikachu was the main Pokemon in the first games. Chuckling a bit as the possible gag. Gag. I went to my bag and then took out a Thunderstone, then going to click on Jessica. However... Rather than the page being replaced by Jessica involving, a text box appeared, this time with the text moving at normal speed. Jessica is refusing to take the stone. Refusing? I was confused. A Pokemon has never done that to me before, except once. Maybe it was a gag back in these old Pokemon game. Sighing, I closed up the bag and began to walk around a bit more, training again. Jessica raised up a few more levels until she was level 60. I tried with the Thunderstone again, but Jessica refused to take it this time. As I closed the bag, another message appeared, a black text box showing the white light before. It's not going to work. Now, do you remember me? I was starting to creep out a little. I saved my game and then clicked on Jessica's stats. On the status screen, her stats seemed normal. 
Level 60, mood is nature, holding lucky egg, female, but something was different. It took me just a few seconds to notice what it was. The Pokemon sprite usually moves as the status screens, but Jessica was unmoving. The Pikachu just sat there, staring intentionally at the screen and didn't look happy at all like the other Pikachu did. In fact, she looked angry. Her crouched out little eyes were just narrowed. Her cheeks were sparkling occasionally. She hadn't been like that since I first gotten her. Worried that it could have been Pokerus or some so form of equivalent, I took her to the Pokemon Center to see if the little message saying, You have Pokerus come up. When I spoke to Nurse Joy, she healed my Pokemon and began to say something, but she said that I wasn't expecting. Oh my, it seems like Jessica isn't very pleased with you. Do you do something to upset it? You should take better care of your Pokemon. I read the screen over and over, trying to understand what I was doing wrong. All of this side effect of some glitch evolving Pikachu and of Thunderstones? Alarm bells were going off in my head, and my other two voices were screaming at me to be careful. But I wanted to get Jessica up to a higher level to battle the champion and my friends, so I began to train her once again. Once she reached level 65, I checked back at her sprite. Jessica's sprite had gone back to normal, but something was different. Whereas the Pikachu sprite normally bounced, Jessica did not. She seemed to be looking at me, her eyes locking into mine quietly. She detailed brown eyes with emotion. I never knew she would see that in anger, her hatred and relentment, sorrow. They were not happy eyes. As I closed her status page, another message flashed up. You're a liar, a crueler, a heartless killer. A killer? I stared at the screen. Now I knew something was wrong. I quickly grabbed my DS and hurled upstairs to my school to find PNR. Both of them were in the upstairs lounge. I showed them my game, but as soon as I turned the DS to show them, the message would replace itself with Jessica's status screen. I told them just to listen to me and begged them to understand. And then the two of them were both just talking about something else. I was just going nuts. And being stupid, I resigned myself to possibly thinking that too, headed back downstairs to my room, continuing to train. As soon as I opened my DS back up, words were at the bottom of the screen that's slightly larger than normal text box. These words were worrying. However, since it was still at the back of the text box, but the words themselves were in blood red and different style of writing, much more blocky and sharp than the rounded edges of the newer writing. You've kept me close. We were best friends. Then you broke me, killed me, and then discarded me. I will never die. I am too close to your heart. Jessica's sprite appeared on the screen, but it was different again. Instead of the happy, bouncing Pikachu, her arms were then folded, did, and her ears were drooping downwards. Her eyes narrowed and her body had turned, was now facing the screen directly. It was then I understood. She wasn't talking to the character at all she was talking to me Je Jessica I whispered staring at her quietly the Pikachu sprite nodded angrily while its mouth began to move silently with the words appear on the screen that same blood red digital writing I thought you cared I thought you really cared wasn't I special to you Cameron wasn't I your special friend a yes or no section appeared on the box I lingered memory slowly began to hit my head as the two other voices and remained silent, probably just as shocked as I was, fingers trembling. I selected yes. Jessica, who nodded on the screen with her tail flickered and her mouth began to move again. Yes, we were partners, you and I. We took down Team Rocket together. We conquered Kanto, Johto, and even Red together. I thought you cared, but I was wrong. You let your rage get the better of you and snapped me like a twig. You crushed me, as well as my heart. You killed me. You're a murderer, Cameron. No, 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 I cried, not realizing what she was talking about. Jessica, I'm sorry. I really am. I could feel the tears beginning to stream down my face. You've got it all wrong. The silence was heard from the screen before I suddenly heard a pika from the speakers. I looked at the screen and realized she turned her back on me and began to walk away. I shook my head, frantically pressing the A button to try and do something. But all I got was a swish of her lightning bolt tail as she faded out. The screen then returned to normal. 
the black character was facing Pikachu, the sprite of some sort of steps. I guess this was Jessica. The little Pikachu block looked at me back before another text but box appeared. At the top of Celestial Tower, I will wait for you. With that, the screen flashed back and then back to normal. Things were just wrong. Although the music had stopped playing and Black seemed to be moving slightly slower than normal. When I checked my party, the Pokemon, the first thing I did was Jessica was no longer in my party. My first place was replaced with my starter Wish, my Samurott. Looking over my Pokemon, I noticed some things. There were cries that were not sounded, and their sprites were frozen. The sprites themselves were not also done in, in certain monochrome colors like blue, yellow, low, or red, or whatnot, as well as done in large, blocky pixels. It's just like the Pokemon Yellow Sprites. Suddenly, everything hit me. Jessica, my old team, the nostalgia. Heck, and finally, what had happened to the cartridge? Without a word, in a real life or game, I used my Sligafith Hynoid to fly to Mistralian City and headed down north towards Celestial Tower. The music still refused to play, but I was in too much torment with myself to care. The two voices in my head were trying to reassure me that this was some kind of nightmare, but I knew it was happening. It was all so real, and my throat was incredibly dry. My tears still ran down my face as I entered the tower. The Tower of Deceased Pokemon. The Pokemon Tower. As soon as I entered turned, uh, the atmosphere, everything was different from outside. The room was darker than normal, and there wasn't anybody there. There was a forlorn silence, but infantly, music was playing. I began to ascend and the spiral staircase, and the music got louder with every floor I raised. Each floor of how it should be but much darker with no trainers or wild Pokemon. The graves were painted black on the final staircase. I saw Cameron used rage. Jessica died in block red letters with the capitals spiraling up the stairs. One letter crushed with each step. Finally, I reached the top and surprisingly, everyone was there. Some of the, tra all the trainers from the tower, gym leaders, Elite Four, Belle, Sharon, and Adler, they were all there looking at me as the steps towards the bell of the tower. As I approached them, people stopped me. What they said shocked me and made me and my throat even dry out more than fresh tears swell up in my eyes. Bell, Cameron, how could you do such a thing? Sharon, you, I looked up to you. How could you betray me? Adler, this is unforgivable, but maybe she will. And you said that you wanted people and Pokemon to live in peace. Then why didn't you? I rose the final few steps. Belle, Sharon, and an Adler all followed, blocking the way out. I went forward there and stopped and right in front of the bell, undeniably a Raichu sprite. I, the Raichu rang the bell and the sound of the sound and eerie music, which now recognized the 8-bit of Lavender Town music from Pokemon Yellow. The music suddenly stopped and another text bubble appeared, black with white writing. You came, Cameron. I did, I whispered quietly, came to the screen, sniffling as I stared at it. The Raichu sprite then turned around, and it took a few steps, steps back, hope only stopping one or two spaces away. Do you know why I wanted to call you here? I, a yes or no box appeared again. I pressed yes with shaking thumbs, and the Raichu shook its head in response. No you don't, don't lie, I called you here, you, so you could see what you did to me. The sprite then took a few final steps towards black, and the screen fuzzed out. A larger sprite replaced in most of the screen, like when N sometimes do did when they talked. However, most almost made me sick. It was a Raichu, but no Raichu I've ever seen. The creature's eyes were flattened into its skull. A large gas was leading from one ear to across the other to the forehead. Bloodstained fur was shown all the way down from its face past its sorrowful eyes and scratched cheeks. Its arms hung limply on its sides and its tail dropped limply over its shoulder. The lightning bolt on the top tip of it just had a large chunk ripped out of it and Raichu's mouth had dried blood around the lips and some still dribbling from the corner of the mouth but it was still the main part of the Raichu that terrified me. Right where the chest was, the abdomen and the stomach area of where the peak Raichu was, there was a gaping wound. Inside of it could be testins, 
bones, cracked ribs, with approaches amounts of blood dripping from it, covering the whole white belly of fur and staining it red. I could see its heart with a sickening turn of my stomach. I saw it beating feebly with the shattered rib cage. Panicking, I pressed A repeatedly to try to get the image away from the screen. Instead, a text box appeared with white, with writing digital red, just like the blood coming down from the peak at Raichu. What's wrong with you, Cameron? Can't stomach what you did to me? Your closest friend was the one we so mercilessly killed? I'm sorry, I screamed suddenly, staring at the Raichu's face. I'm sorry! With that, I crumpled over the screen and just sobbed. J Jessica, it was an accident. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to do anything to you. You're still my Pokemon. You're still my friend. None of this was meant to happen. Jess, d don't, d don't hate me. It was all stupid, a stupid accident. I cried for a few solid minutes before finally looking into the screen. Jessica had gone and the overworld Raichu Sprite was just simply standing there looking at Black. Nothing was said for a moment and I simply stared at the screen. Finally, a text box appeared. Was it truly an accident? A yes or no box appeared. I pressed yes and there was another pause. The Raichu sprite then turned around and walked back towards the bell before another text box appeared. Do you regret what you did? Another yes or no box appeared. I frantically pressed yes, more tears making their way down my face. There was another pause before Jessica finally turned around, staring at Black. Jessica believes in you. I felt a wave of relief wash over me as I saw a Raichu Sprite walk back over to Black. The screen then flashed up with some gruesome Raichu Sprite again, but this time with sorrowful eyes were replaced with soft ones and a small weak smile on his face. Do you still love me? There was, an, there was no yes or no box, but instead there was, it was asked if I wanted to record or check mic options. I knew my DS microphone was fine, so I pressed record and took a deep breath. J Jessica, I'm so sorry for what I did to you. I wish I could reverse what I put you through. I should have never forgotten. You were just a bunch of pixels and data, but just to that being, just like me, I am really sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. Ever. I'll be more careful. I I'll never restart a Pokemon game. Ever. Ever. All I want... I took a short breath and finally let the last words out. Is your forgiveness for my stupidity. I still love you, Jessica. The picture of Jessica on my screen nodded and faded out. The overworld returned and Jessica appeared again as a Raichu sprite. However, this time Black spun around in a circle and a small Pokeball flew from its hands. A flash of white engulfed Jessica and the ball closed as Black moved forward to pick it up and a new text box appeared. Thank you, Cameron. You really do remember. I smiled at the screen as I did. Sharon, Bill, Ann, and Alder all walked to back to, to Black and surrounded him. The screen that faded out and Black reappeared in front of the bell. He rang the bell. The usual message appeared instead of what normally happens. However, Black walked away from Bell with the screen still focusing on it. And as it faded, a few ghosts of silhouettes, a Charizard, a Blastoise, a Venusaur, a Sand Slash, and a Dragonite, all my old Pokemon Yellow Team, had been laid to rest in Celestial Tower, never returning but never to be forgotten. The screen blacked out, and I had returned back to Melstron City. A message popped up saying that the game had been saved. I checked my Pokemon and saw Jessica in my sixth slot. Opening her page was a huge wave of nostalgia, and comfort in greeting me and my two other voices as we looked at the screen. Greeting us was a 100-level Raichu, Moodus Nature, female with the nickname Jessica, and Otia's Cam which was my Pokemon Yellow character name. Moving along the move section, I saw her stats were completely how I left in Yellow. Her move set was exactly the same as her old Yellow move set. Thunderbolt, Double Team, Submission, and Surf. I smiled broadly. She had give, forgiven me and decided to join me once again. As I pressed B out of the leave page, one final message popped up. The large Raichu appeared again, but this time there were no cuts or internal organs shown. What was shown was the smiley face of the healthy Raichu beaming at the screen. A message box popped up as the Raichu's mouth moved, as if it was saying the words, 
Thank you, Cameron, for taking me back. Oh, and by the way, the screen then finally changed briefly. The picture had shown one paw up, and I saw something in her paw that made my eyes widen. And the show, no matter how much anyone would prove otherwise, this was no joke or hack. In her paw sat the final message, missing part to my Pokemon yellow cartridge. I truly never forgot you either. I hope you read this and realize it to us that it may seem like a game, but Jessica taught me that if you love a game too much, it becomes a part of you, so much so that you can't leave it behind. I have never, ever restarted or broken a Pokemon game since. I am careful now with my games. I do not want to upset anybody like Jessica over again. I'm glad she's so forgiven and loving of me. If she wasn't, it could have ended so much worse. And that, my pretties, was Pokemon Jessica, a Pokepasta. My final thoughts on this story? Oh my goodness, this one was just a really good um, Pokepasta. I remember Creeps My Pasta narrated this one like a long time ago. Like, we're talking like way back. This story was definitely one of the good popular, um, well, Pokepastas that I've seen. I mean, I've seen some other ones, but this one is definitely... A st one that is pretty damn awesome. I mean, I like the concept of it. It looks pretty good with the whole, you know, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty good game in Pokepasta. I mean, yeah, there, I know there were cliches in the story, but they're still, but it was still a pretty fun read. I actually had enjoyment in reading this story. I mean, it was, it was a cute, good story in my eyes. I personally thought it was neat. In all the reality, I honestly really do enjoy this story. I thought it was really well made in detail. So anyway, with that being said and that being the case, I recommend you guys check out this story if you haven't. This is on, well, Creepypasta Wiki, but it's also on the Pokepasta Wiki. And so I decided to go ahead and narrate this story because, you know, I mean, it's a pretty good ending for a story. It doesn't involve anyone dying or anything, but it's a pretty good Pokepasta. So, anyways, I personally do like the grammar. It's pretty good, as well as the sense structuring, storyline. Everything about it was just flat-out amazing. It's a pretty good story. I do personally thought it was really well made in detail, especially with the concept and all. So I gotta really say, it's a pretty good story. And I do recommend checking out this Pokepasta if you haven't. You will not be disappointed once you see it. It's a pretty good story. I mean... Yeah, it does have a very good storyline and all. It's pretty awesome. And I do recommend people checking a look at it if you haven't. So, yeah. I guess with that being said and that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say right now, um, it's a good story. I mean, it's a good pokey pasta. Despite the fact that there were some cliches in the story, I'm willing to excuse those because they are pretty good. I mean, I honestly love this story. It's a pretty good one. There's... Definitely well made. It's got a good concept in that. And I recommend you guys take a look at this story if you haven't. Um, yeah. Anyways, I will leave a link to this story in the description down below. So any of you guys who want to check out this story, you are more than welcome to check it out. And as always, I'm going to sit here and say right now that this is just simply my own personal opinion. If you did happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these... Um, Cree pastas, and this is just my own thoughts. I give this one a 10 out of 10. It's a pretty good pokey pasta. It's a brilliant, well made. It's beautiful, well made. It's just flat out awesome. I really gotta say props to the author. Pretty fun story. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good story. I still like it. It's a pretty good story, and I recommend you guys take a look at it if you haven't. So, anyways, with that being said, and that being the case, what did you guys personally think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. And before I end off, I want to say um, to the author of the story, I'm not sure who you are. So if you happen to do be the author of the story, feel free to comment in the comments below. Let me know who you are so then that way I can... 
you know, be sure to give you proper credit in the description if I find out if you're the author of the story. If the that's if the author ever does come across this um video, which I highly doubt, but you never know. So anyways, um yeah. Don't forget to leave this video a like, comment and subscribe if you're new, ring the bell for notifications when I upload, so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.